On September 6th, the CDC issued the following statement during a press conference announcing this investigation, and I quote, while the investigation is ongoing, CDC advises that individuals consider not using e-cigarettes because as of now, this is the primary means of preventing this type of severe lung disease, and that e-cigarette use is never safe for youth, young adults, or pregnant women. During the same press conference, uh, you announced that you were setting up your emergency operations center. Doctor, could you describe to the committee what factors led uh, CDC to that decision and what kind of expertise will result from that? And given the life-threatening emergency that we're faced in, how do we make sure um, that we don't lose anyone else? You know, this is a fast-moving and very serious <clears throat> outbreak of a new condition in primarily young people. CDC established an incident management system to respond to the outbreak and then took the additional step of activating our emergency operations center. We have more than 100 people responding to the outbreak right now in Atlanta as well as deployed to assisted states. And we took the step of activation to better support the state and local public health who are on the front line of this. We have um, hundreds of cases getting reported to us from all across the nation in order to work e e um, efficiently and effectively with the states as well as the FDA and others. The EOC activation facilitates that. Doctor, um, I'm from the San Francisco Bay Area. When I go home, um, Juul is now spending up to $40 million, probably more, in overturning a local ordinance by the San Francisco municipal government that merely says that e-cigarettes are banned until the FDA comes up with the end of their investigation of whether they're safe or not. Recently, we had an executive and a founder of Juul sit here and, uh, from my perspective, try to say that e-cigarettes, their product, actually is helpful to keep keeping people away from tobacco, particularly young people. In Richmond, California, uh, they, in my district, they just passed a similar ordinance. So those ordinances, and we'll talk about this more in the second panel, seems to me to be a preventative, cautious approach to this. You've got something, a product out there that could is leading to deaths. What could we do further as a Congress to make sure this doesn't happen? We have a company, in my view, that has no ethical boundaries, um, is in the business of addicting people, particularly young people, and then is willing to spend $40 million, and the FDA has announced that their criminal division is investigating them, and I hope they investigate their political consultants as well. They're not, they're shameless when it comes to the information they give. So given you're getting the public health officials involved, given that this committee is actively involved, this is a daunting task to try to make sure that the public actually understands, particularly young people who are vulnerable, as you alluded to in your opening statements, to advertising like this. You know, um, I appreciate the committee's um, interest in the topic and the attention that you have given to this. We know that youth should not use e-cigarettes, that nicotine is one of the most addictive substances that there is, and that nicotine is dangerous for the developing brain that adolescents and young adults have. Um, we also know that flavors are a major attractant for young people, and that um, they often are the first e-cigarette type that, that children use, and um, that the latest generation of e-cigarettes has uh, a higher available nicotine level that is particularly addictive. And so the last few years of data raise our concerns substantially in terms of the epidemic of youth e-cigarette use, and I appreciate all that the, the committee's doing to address that. Do you, do you need more statutory authority? In this instance, when young people in particular and life and death are on the line, um, would it be helpful for the CDC to be, have the statutory authority to not just encourage people not to use it, but prohibit people from using this until your investigation's done? Well, the CDC doesn't typically have regulatory authority over this type of matter. The FDA does. And as you know, the FDA is taking um, many measures now to intensify their work in light of this epidemic, both the epidemic of youth vaping and the outbreak of lung injury. I think one of the key things that um, could help in this investigation, though, in terms of the outbreak, is modernization of our data systems that are really outdated, slow, the epidemic is moving faster than our data gathering, and we're really um, 
uh, losing people in the meantime. And I, I appreciate that. I, the reason I asked the question is to suggest that the FDA is moving too slowly, and it might be, in my perspective, more efficient if the CDC actually had the authority to say that these products should be removed from being legally sold. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.